Rescuers in Valencia are still working to find survivors following flash floods that claimed at least 95 lives. The United States has accused Israel of not doing enough to address concerns over strikes on Gaza. Kamala Harris and Donald Trump have made their final pitches to voters across the U.S. swing states. Residents of Valencia woke up to scenes of devastation on Thursday after villages were wiped out by monstrous flash floods that claimed at least 95 lives. The death toll is expected to rise further as search efforts continue with an unknown number of people still missing. It is the worst natural disaster to hit Spain this century, with scenes eerily similar to damage left by a hurricane or tsunami. Wrecked cars and trucks piled up along the highways, and a thick layer of mud covered many streets, as Spanish military personnel worked to clear flooded areas. Over a thousand soldiers joined local emergency workers to search for bodies and survivors. Thousands of people were left without water and electricity, and parts of the region were isolated as roads were cut off and train lines disrupted. Spain's government declared three days of mourning starting on Thursday. The United States has accused Israel of not doing enough to answer international concerns over indiscriminate strikes on Gaza. They are not doing enough to get us the answers that we have requested. There are uh, significant questions that you all ask, that other uh, countries have asked, that we believe Israel needs to answer publicly. Miller went on to say that the situation surrounding humanitarian aid provided by Israel to civilians in Gaza is not at a level the U.S. finds acceptable. Meanwhile, Israel's military chief says the Israel Defense Force needs to be larger as the war expands to different fronts. It comes as international mediators have launched a new push for negotiated ceasefires in Lebanon and Gaza, with senior White House officials scheduled to visit Israel on Thursday. Discussions surrounding a two-state solution to the crisis have also begun in Saudi Arabia, which is hosting the first meeting of a new global alliance to press for the establishment of a Palestinian state. North Korea launched a new intercontinental ballistic missile on Thursday in a test that saw record height and flight time recorded in a year. South Korea and Japan both detected the firing of what they suspected was a new, more agile weapon aimed at threatening mainland United States. South Korea's Joint Chief of Staff spokesperson also warned against Russia possibly providing materials and information to North Korea. This comes as Washington warned that North Korean troops in Russian uniforms are heading towards Ukraine, a move condemned by NATO's Secretary General as a dangerous expansion of the ongoing war. U.S. presidential candidates Kamala Harris and Donald Trump have made their way across several swing states as they continue appealing to voters with less than a week to go until the election. After being confronted by pro-Palestine protesters at all three of her events on Wednesday, Harris told voters in Wisconsin she is looking for common ground with people who disagree with her. Unlike Donald Trump, I don't believe people who disagree with me are the enemy. He wants to put them in jail. I'll give them a seat at my table. Meanwhile, Donald Trump has continued to seize on the controversial comments made by President Joe Biden on Tuesday, boarding a white garbage truck after his arrival in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Joe Biden should be ashamed of himself if he knows what he's even doing. And she should be ashamed 
because she shouldn't let him do it. She's the vice president, but I assume she's acting as the president. She should never have let that happen. I hope you enjoy this garbage truck. Both candidates made a campaign stop in North Carolina earlier in the day, and Kamala Harris also traveled to Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, where she urged voters to cast their ballots early. Volkswagen said significant cost cuts are urgently needed as the company reported a steep decline in third quarter earnings on Wednesday. Meanwhile, the car manufacturer faces angry employee representatives due to the possibility of plant closures in Germany. Die Lage spitzt sich weiter zu. Die Entwicklung in der Automobilindustrie in Europa und besonders am Standort Deutschland betrachten wir mit Sorge. Das zeigen auch die jüngsten Meldungen unserer Wettbewerber. Das machen aber auch die rückläufigen Quartalsergebnisse der Marke Volkswagen Pkw deutlich. The company reported net profit of 1.58 billion euros for the July-September period, which is a 64% decline from 4.35 billion euros a year earlier. Wir werden heute der IG Metall in der zweiten Verhandlungsrunde unsere Vorstellungen unterbreiten. Wir brauchen jetzt gemeinsames und konsequentes Handeln, um eine tragfähige und nachhaltige Lösung zu finden, und zwar im Sinne unserer Belegschaft und unseres Unternehmens. Volkswagen already terminated its job protection pledge that was in force since 1994. As new competitors entering European markets and the fundamental technologies of automobile industry are rapidly changing, Germany's position as a manufacturing location is deteriorating. European brands are facing increased competition, especially from inexpensive Chinese electric cars. Volkswagen has just announced the closure of three plants in Germany, while Audi will stop production at a factory in Belgium. The European automotive sector seems to be in crisis. But the German industry sees itself in a transition period with a switch to electric cars. This comes, however, at a high cost, as EV car production requires fewer employees overall than in the past. According to a new study, the transformation of the German automotive industry could lead to 186,000 job losses over the next 10 years, and a quarter of those have already been lost. The German Association of the Automotive Industry thinks that other jobs will be created, but this requires to work on competitiveness. In the future, uh, the, the location side, the attractiveness of the location side decides where investments are made and where future jobs will be established. Yes, there will be jobs that won't be needed that much anymore, but with the uh, digital uh, era and uh, everything concerning software, but also uh, the electric mobility itself, of course, there will be a lot of new jobs created. So um, we need to make sure that Europe, that Germany, has the attractiveness, the competitiveness that the investments are made here. According to German car makers, the key to this is cheaper energy, which is four times more expensive in Europe than in China and the United States. On the other hand, they disagree with the European tariffs on electric cars made in China that have just entered into force. But according to the NGO Clean Transport, the new tariffs will give the sector breathing space during the switch. The tariffs will not change the entire dynamics completely. Maybe instead of importing those electric vehicles from China, we will see a lot more factories here in Europe where Chinese manufacturers are producing those vehicles locally, which, is, which can also be good news for Europe. In terms of pricing, uh, there might be indeed some short-term uh, effects where maybe uh, there's less vehicles available very short term for example or the prices are a bit higher but generally it's very hard to say because it really depends on the pricing strategies of, of Chinese car makers and a lot of them have very comfortable profit margins. According to the expert policymakers and the European Commission have an important role to play in simplifying the business environment for green industry but it is also important to convince people to switch to green vehicles as quickly as possible. Sales of new cars have fallen sharply, 18.3% fewer than in the same period last year. 
As for electric cars, sales are stagnant in Europe, but growing globally. China filed a lawsuit against the European Union before the World Trade Organization over the steep tariffs the bloc has slapped on its electric vehicles. Brussels argues the electric vehicles benefit from excessive subsidies to retail at artificially low prices in global markets. The new duties come on top of an existing 10% levy and are being collected as of Wednesday the 30th of October. Designed by the European Commission to offset Beijing's financial aid and prevent EU firms from being pushed out of the lucrative electric vehicle sector, the trade measures will remain in place for five years. We want China has previously threatened retaliation against the EU's dairy, brandy and pork industries, moves that Brussels has denied as unwarranted. The ministry stressed its willingness to continue negotiations with the Commission to achieve a solution as soon as possible that could reverse the tariffs.